You are listening to KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank, your partner in possible. What is up, soccer fans, and welcome to another episode of Soccer Talks with me, Allie Trose Martin, on KC Sports Network. It is February, which means Major League Soccer returns this month, February 25th, Sporting KC's first game on the road against the Portland Timbers. We are just weeks away, and I could not be more excited. It's been a long off season, and so I am just ready to have some Sporting KC soccer back in my life. And today we have a very special guest joining the show. Center back Courtney Ford is joining us live from Arizona, where Sporting Kansas City currently is and has been for the last few weeks for their preseason. So he joins us to talk about his preparations going into 2023. We talk about some stuff that happened last season with the suspension, his goals for this upcoming year, and a whole lot more. So get ready for that interview. As always, we are presented by our friends at Emprise Bank. You can open an account with Emprise Bank in less than five minutes. The savings just start there, though. Emprise is a trusted partner with a variety of products and services to help you achieve all of your goals. Don't be tethered to a brick building. Start a meaningful relationship with a bank that has your best in mind. And now with that, please help me in welcoming Courtney Ford to the Soccer Talks podcast. Courtney Ford, welcome to the Soccer Talks podcast. How's it going, my friend? Yeah, doing well. Doing well. Sore, trying to trying to hang in there. <laughs> yeah, so this is what, week number four of preseason in Arizona for you guys? That's correct. Going on week four. So which which week is like the worst week? Because I feel like week one, you you probably come in all excited, good to see everybody again. And then at, at some point, I feel like it's got to start catching up with you a little bit. Yeah, I think it, I would probably say between weeks two and three, that first week, your body really hasn't had a chance to get sore yet. Um, but yeah, going on the second, third week, all the fatigue starts to catch up, especially after all the two a days. So um, but hopefully after, after the first month, um, and after we get a chance to go back and have a couple of days off in KC, we'll be doing better. So how's the team been looking? How are you feeling? What's kind of been, uh, the vibe of preseason so far ahead of the 2023 season? Yeah, team looks great. Um, just really trying to apply those tactical pieces that, you know, the coaching staff wants us to, um, you know, apply in our game. So that's been good on that end. And the other piece is just, you know, getting the, the physical component down. Um, so I know we're all sore, brutally sore, but I think that's the point of it, right? We're going to be a little bit overtrained so that when the season comes around, you know, our bodies are ready to go 90 plus minutes. Well, and especially this year where you add the league's cup in, there's going to be just so many more games uh, and a lot of great competitions this year as well. Just what's a lot of change ahead of this 2023 season, right? I mean, you've got the new deal with Apple TV and MLS season pass. You've got, you know, this new competition with the League's Cup coming in. I just feel like there's, this is a very um, transitional time in Major League Soccer. What, what are some of your thoughts on that as someone who's been in the league for uh, a few years now? Yeah, I think it's good. It's good. I think that you know, hopefully we're getting back to being on kind of a consistent schedule where we know what our off is going to be like. We know when we're in season. We know when our preseason is, obviously, with COVID. Um, you know, this, the past couple of years has been very difficult and knowing the timeline with stuff, you know, and then the World Cup so that there was a shortened season. And I think, you know, now that the World Cup's done and COVID's in our rearview mirror, I think that we're good. We're going to find some consistency going forward. And, you know, we're all excited about that. Uh, the deal with Apple, especially for family and friends that like to watch the game. Um, and then obviously you mentioned League's Cup and, and whatnot. So we're excited. But first and foremost, we're just worried about the fitness component, um, getting ready and you know being able to tactically apply what we need to so that we're ready for the first game of the season. So we'll get into some more soccer talk. We'll talk a little bit last season and this upcoming year as well. But I first want to start with something. I saw a picture. They, they're getting all set for the Super Bowl now in Arizona with the Chiefs and the Eagles um, playing there in just a couple of weeks. I, I think you all will be back in KC, if I'm correct, during at least what, like, at what point? I don't know. Are you guys going to be back in KC when the actual Super Bowl happens? Yes, yes, we'll be back then. So that's actually why we got to do the room change. We have the Kansas City Chiefs coming in, and um, obviously they're doing they're doing all this stuff for them. It looks pretty cool around here. Um, but yeah, no, we'll be back in Kansas City that week during the Super Bowl. I'm sure it's going to be pretty chaotic here here in Scottsdale. Oh my gosh, I can imagine. So for you, having you know grown up in Kansas, did you grow up a big Chiefs fan? Yeah, yeah, huge Chiefs fan. Unfortunately, they weren't very good then. 
Um, you know, I ended up making my move to, to Colorado in 2009. So the whole time I was rooting for the Chiefs as a kid, we weren't very good. Um, so, but it is cool, you know, that, you know, they're doing really well and have for the past few years. And it's nice to be a supporter of a um, back in back in hometown and a team that's actually performing well. So it's, it's really fun. And I know that you you played football as a kid, right? Like you were kind of a multi-sport athlete. Yes, yes, I definitely was. Played the the top five, you know, the the football, basketball, hockey, baseball, and soccer. Um, but yeah, I played football up until about high school. So. Okay, what was your position? I was a running back. I was running back. Really? I was still the age that I was just faster than everybody else and could just run around the outside. But um, eventually, it came a point where you know everybody else was bigger and stronger and I wasn't trying to get hit all the time so I had yeah. to choose widely the sport that I carried on in the high school yeah running back's kind of one of those like tell, you're putting yourself into the fire like every single time you make a run through some right. of those uh, alignments it's pretty tough uh right. you do strike me as someone though I could I was maybe gonna guess quarterback but I don't know I feel like you've got like the right height I don't know how the hand-eye coordination is obviously you're a soccer player so the feet are good but yeah, you know, I never, never was a quarterback. Never. A little bit wide receiver, a little bit of running back, but I probably didn't have the physique um, of a quarterback, whatever it needed to be at that age. You know, I was, wasn't as tall, scrawny little guy, so I probably wasn't cut out to be a quarterback. <laughs> Which is hard to, like, imagine. I, yeah, I guess, like, at what point um, did you really start to, like, feel – as though you're, cause I, I feel like every young athlete kind of deals with this, right? Like you either start out, like I was always like the smallest kid. And so I was always like physically outmatched by people. At what point did you start to feel like, okay, I am like developing into like the kind of athlete that could go on and play professional. Yeah. I'd probably say college. Um, you know, they're coming up in the Colorado Rapids Academy. You know, they offered me a contract out of high school and I was very insecure about it. I was really skinny, probably same height, 6'2", and maybe like 155 pounds. And I just didn't feel like I would be able to go and compete with all these men in a league. So um, that was a big, big reason of the decision that I made to go to college. Um, the plan was just for, for a year, but I'm happy I did it. But I'd probably say, um, you know, I put on 28 pounds my freshman year of college. So coming out of that, um, I felt like I was physically ready to go ahead and compete at the next level. Um, but yeah, so I'd probably say around, you know, that 19, 20 years old. So when did you start to overcome some of that insecurity or, or feeling like, oh my gosh, like, can I do this? Because I can imagine, especially being so young with such a big opportunity in front of you, like that's, those are like some pretty complex, uh, you know, situations, but also like emotions that you're dealing with as well. Yeah, no, for sure. I think it's one of those things that kind of built, you know, my whole childhood. Um, I was always, for the main for the most part, I was taller than everybody else, but I was also really skinny and it was definitely a big insecurity. You know, I didn't want to go in the weight room in middle school and high school with everybody else. I wanted to lift on my own time. Um, so it's just a, it's a big thing that I think a lot of people have to overcome. Um, you know, genetics are genetics and you're, you're either um, super scrawny and skinny as a kid or, you know, you have those good genes. And I was just, you know, one of the skinnier guys. And so I'd obviously get in the weight room. Um, that first year out of, out of high school and build that confidence. Um, and then once I saw that I was able to put on weight, um, get in the weight room, eat more, that gave me a lot of confidence and ultimately helped my decision of, you know, signing early uh, out of college. What was like your first, like what was like the most memorable, like your first professional training session? Like, do you have a memory that stands out where you're just like, all right, whoa, we're, we're in the, we're playing with the big kids now. <laughs> Yeah, I think I was I was 16 years old, um, and obviously I wasn't a pro yet, but I was still training with the first team there in Colorado, and Oscar Pereira was the coach at that time, and I remember coming in, I was extremely nervous, and we were doing a possession drill, and I like completed my first pass, and after that first pass, I was like, all right, I can do this, but nonetheless, it still didn't help any of the nerves of going to train with those guys, you know, at 16 years old, uh, but I do have a very a very specific moment that I remember going to those sessions and the feeling that was in my body and whatnot. Cause it, you're excited, you know, you, you feel really good, especially 16 year olds old. You think you're so cool. You, It's awesome. It's a big accomplishment, but then at the same time you have to go and you have to perform well if you want to um, have a second chance at that. So now when you see kids 
getting those same opportunities that you did at one point, you know, being with Sporting KC and you see some of those young kids on the field, like how do you kind of what's your uh, philosophy when it comes to like how you want to make a, an impression to those kids or, or interact with them when they when they do get those opportunities on the field? Yeah, I think, you know, first things first, you just try to kind of understand where their head's at. You know, everybody's raised differently. There's some parents that want kids to go straight to straight to college, get a degree. There's other parents that want their kids to go pro. So you just kind of have to pick their brain and kind of see where their head's at. Um, you know, some guys are like, oh, I want to sign, I want to sign. And then you have, you know, a different set of advice that you would give them for those kids that just want to hop right in. And then you have kids that know that they want to go to college. And then that's a completely other thing, you know, where you're talking to them about, you know, the confidence piece, the lifting, the eating, because most kids, you know, coming in to train with us early could all use some weight, right? Um, the physique, the physical component um, is a big part of it. So it's just a different conversation um, depending on kind of what their goals are around the situation. So... Speaking of, you know, preseason, getting ready for the 2023 season, how um, how would you kind of assess where the team's at right now? Team chemistry, just like excitement level within the group for the upcoming year. I know that some moves have been made, some made, you know, in season last year uh, with players like William Nagata and Eric Tommy coming into the mix and then some offseason moves as well. Just kind of how's, how's the group gelling together right now? Yeah, no, collectively, the group is awesome. It's really good. We have really good team chemistry. Um, you know, on our off days, we're all doing stuff together. Um, and we're definitely all all hanging in there together. You know, we're all physically sore. Um, and that's definitely something that we can all relate to. And just it's a big reminder to each other that's like, all right, we're supposed to be sore. It's all right. We can get through this. Um, but from the tactical side of it, you know, everything is, is great. Everything's gone as planned. Um, you know, we're really hitting the defensive organization first. Um, and we figure um, if we handle, you know, our business on the defensive side, the attacking stuff will come. So early on in preseason, we've been hitting the defensive organization pretty hard. And for you, with this being your second year now with Sporting Kansas City, how much, how much easier is that second preseason compared to the first one where you're coming into a new team, you're trying to learn some of this stuff, and especially coming from Colorado where they played a bit of a different system as well? Yeah, I would probably argue that it's actually been more difficult for me personally. Um, you know, I think it's just different for everybody. You know, my first year coming back um, right out of uh, injury, you know, my goal was, you know, be fit, stay healthy, um, just make it through the year healthy. That was kind of my mindset going forward. It wasn't about a starting position early on. And I think this year um, that's the goal that I had set out my set out for myself. You know, I really wanted to push the fitness in the off season so that, that wasn't something that I had to worry about coming into preseason and I could just worry and worry about developing. Um, and that's definitely been a battle. I think, you know, it's, it's hard to develop in the areas that you want to when you're so physically sore. Uh, but for me personally, I'm just trying to be in a position where I can compete for a starting spot, um, which is very different than my mindset going in last year. So I think that we're in a good spot and just try to stay mentally strong and keep, keep fighting for a spot. So how are you feeling physically? Cause I know, I mean, gosh, like the injury that you were coming back from is not something that a lot of players even who might suffer a, a similar type of injury or a, an injury in the same area. I mean, that was like, that was grueling for you. Yeah, I think, you know, without going in the, into the specifics of the injury, you know, really what kept me out so long was just, you know, fluid buildup on the, you know, lateral portion of my knee. So luckily there wasn't anything structurally wrong. So I think that really helped in regards to I didn't have some huge obstacle, some huge hurdle that I had to overcome physically when I did get back to it. So I'm very grateful for that. I was able to slide back into it. The biggest thing for me was the fitness component. I think after not playing games for that long, it's very difficult to to get back to the level of fitness that you need to be. So that's obviously why I hit it really hard this offseason. Um, it was a huge goal of mine to, you know, just – not necessarily overdo it, but definitely push it so that I, I wasn't feeling any any weakness in that area of my game um, coming into preseason. I know uh, your head coach, Peter Ramiz, is very adamant on every player following that off-season regimen um, <laughs> as closely as they possibly can. So um, how, like, what can you tell us about the off-season training that, that the the club provides and, and how difficult it is? Like, would I survive if I tried with really um, – 
very little running experience in the last however many years. Don't want to uh, get too much <laughs> my uh, cardio activity, <laughs> but how um, would you describe the difficulty of it? Probably not. Probably not. This year was pretty taxing. Obviously, we all had a bad taste in our mouth with the way that last season ended, not making playoffs. So um, we definitely wanted to come in in a good place. And, you know, he made that very clear. And every single guy did their job of putting in the work in the offseason. It wasn't easy, but it's a lot of miles. Um, I know for a good portion of it, I was averaging 25 to 30 miles a week. Um, wow. And obviously, that's a combination of long distance running and I'm talking like six to eight miles and then some of it is a lot more anaerobic um, a lot of sprints and then obviously you have the lifts in there so um, definitely a time that we all needed to to spend with our families and to take a breather but um, there was a lot of work in the off season so it wasn't all vacation fun and games that's for sure and I know a lot of you guys did vacation together uh, Barcelona I think was uh, on the were you in Barcelona I wasn't, but there was a good group of guys. Um, good okay, six or seven where did, where did you travel way. to? I, I, you know, obviously I follow all you guys on social media. It was hard for me to keep track of who was where. So where did you, what places did you hit up the off season? Yeah, we went to Playa de Carmen. So me and my girlfriend and then um, Kyrie and then a couple family friends. Um, so yeah, we went to Playa. We spent some time in Cancun, spent some time in Tulum. Um, we were there for about a week, so that was nice. Um, and then me, my girlfriend, and her family, we also spent some time in St. John. Um, so just very different vacations, you know. We did a lot of we did a lot of nice dinners, a lot of fishing in, in Cancun, and then St. John was more R and R, more relaxation, sitting by the pool and whatnot. Um, so it's definitely important to mix up those vacations for sure. For sure. Well, you know, I know. You know, it's great to hear that you had such a great off season, and you know it was great to see you getting back on the field and, and making a big impact for this team on the defensive side. Um, I, I know just about everybody, like knowing your story and, and the kind of guy that you are off the field, just it easy to root for you. Just you know, and, and your success given all the adversity that you've overcome. And I know last season, you know, was also hard because of the suspension that occurred and and something that was really tough on you. Just you know, now that you're months removed from that, you've got this new season ahead, kind of clean slate. When you look back on that time, you know, what was that like for you? And and what's kind of been your mindset around just that experience and, and kind of what went down? Yeah. Um, I mean, I still have a bad taste in my, in my mouth about that, you know, um, obviously I understand that it happens to a lot of athletes. Um, it's an easy mistake, you know, to happen, but Nonetheless, um, I just had big goals set out for last season. Um, once I started playing a good string of games, um, you know, I really, you know, saw comments about, you know, comeback player of the year, blah, blah, blah. And I really felt like I was on on pace to do that. So it sucks to be um, derailed by, you know, something that, you know, you were trying to do the right thing. And I think that's that's the worst thing is, you know, if, if you know you're trying to do wrong, play the system, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, you just kind of have to own it and move on with it. But I think the thing that hurts most is when you try to do the right thing um, and it doesn't pay off. And that was definitely the situation for me. Um, trying to do the right thing in the offseason, no team. Um, and it was just one of those things that pretty unlucky and it came back to bite me. Um, so I definitely have a bad taste in my mouth. Um, since that's happened, it's just been all the focus has been on this season and performance in games. Um, so I arguably have had a very long off season because as soon as that suspension started, that's where I, you know, I did make it back for the past couple games, but that's when I saw my off season started. So um, mm -hmm. this whole fitness program that I've been on has been basically since that suspension has happened. So I've been at it for a while. Um, like I said, really bad taste in my mouth and I'm just going to let that fuel me going into this season. When you did, you know, kind of get back, with your teammates and, and everything, just kind of what was there, um, you know, how did they support you through that? What was kind of the relationship what, like with the guys on the team just when all that news kind of came out? Yeah, I think, you know, I obviously went to the team early on way before anything came out and I just let them know what was going on and they were all very supportive then. Uh, but I think the thing that stood out to me is actually when I came back, um, Actually, Willie and Tommy, Eric, Tommy, they joined the team when I was already on suspension. So I hadn't met them. And um, when I came back from suspension, they both pulled me aside and, you know, they said, hey, like, 
we've heard your story and the way that you come to train every day. It's really impressive. Um, they really were impressed with my attitude and, and how I approached everything. And that said a lot to me because that meant that the, the other guys on the team that they've had conversations about it. And um, yeah, so it's just, it's very evident to me that the team was very supportive and um, I think we're very respectful of not getting too much into each other's business. So I could tell that although I had not, hadn't had a lot of personal conversations with the guys, um, I knew from those couple conversations with Willie and Tommy that, you know, the team has spoken about me in a, in a light manner. So it was nice. Speaking of Eric, Tommy and Willie Agata, I mean, we've seen what those guys can do in games. I've seen some of the goals that they've scored in training, how those guys train as well. What's it like going up against them as a defensive player on the training pitch? Yeah, no, me, me and Willie actually joke about it quite often, but we love it. We love it because I, I think of myself as a pretty physical athletic center back, and obviously he's a physical specimen of himself. Um, so we really do go back back and forth. We, we're at it every day that we're not on the same team. So it's kind of getting to a point when we're on the same team where we're like, hey, we, we're not getting kicked today. We're not kicking each other today. Um, so it's kind of a joke. But when we're on when we're on different teams, we definitely go we definitely go at each other and Eric Tommy is just unbelievable on the ball. Um, he's very fit. He's just a good professional. Um, so it's just nice to be able to have him and, and see how, how he approaches the game. Is there anything else that's kind of uh, stood out to you in preseason training? Just anything uh, about the group that, you know, makes you really excited for this 2023 season and, and what the team can bring? Um, yeah, I just think that probably the collectiveness of the group. Um, obviously, we didn't have a lot of turnover. Um, in regards to how many new guys we brought in. So it's really just been nice to just have those new guys in and integrate them really quickly. And it's also been really cool to see how some of the young guys, um, you know, made strides over the off season, some of the work that they put in, and it's pretty evident um, in regards to how they're performing. So that's been pretty cool to see as well. Okay, Courtney Ford, we've got now a fun little segment called fill in the blank. So I'll read you kind of like a, a sentence with a blank and in one or a few words, you just kind of fill that in for us, okay? Ready? All right, all right, no pressure, huh? No, no pressure, nothing too hard. Okay, <laughs> the most famous person that I've ever met is blank. Von Miller. Ooh, good one. All right, the worst haircut I've ever had was blank. <sighs> Two days ago. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I basically, I basically got my hair chopped off. The guys have been joking, joking with me about it, but definitely wasn't pleased with my, my haircut a couple days ago. I had to actually take the trimmers and go, go fix it up myself. So I'm happy that the, the camera doesn't show everything here. So <laughs> are any, any changes on the horizon we should know about? I know that you're a guy that likes to kind of like really, um, you know, show his personality through your hair. Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. I think, uh, you know, I think the blonde will always come back. Um, I don't know if you know this, but like I've said earlier, I think it's one of those things that my mom loved. Um, she just loved being able to, you know, find me wearing the bright orange cleats and the and the blonde hair. Um, it's definitely something she always mentions. So usually at least once a year, I like to throw that back in the mix, but not really sure when it's going to happen. The blonde hair and, and bright shoes, is it just kind of something that you go off of a feeling like, hey, this feels like the right time to do it? Or is there like, you know, when a big game's coming up, um, it usually, it, it honestly just has a lot to do with, you know, how the season's going, where we're at. Um, you know, if I feel her presence, um, if I'm feeling like being super spontaneous or sometimes, you know, when I'm, I'm playing really well and I have a lot of confidence. So, um, just sort of depends on a lot of different things. I love it. All right. Next question. Um, if you could travel to one place that you've never been before, it would be blank. Italy. It's a good one. That's on my bucket list too. Never been. Family, I have like, you know, family ties there. Would love to go. So big Italian food guy? Uh yeah, yeah. No, I love Italian food. And I I've just seen pictures and it's just beautiful. But I also want to go in the summertime and not in the winter. And unfortunately our off season's always in the winter. So never really a good time to go. It, yeah, that's that's tough. I don't know if you could squeeze something in there. Uh I don't during like a couple of off days. I don't know if that would work, but someday you will get there. Um, okay, a lot of people don't like blank, but I think it's awesome. Fishing. Fishing, okay. Yeah, that, uh, what's, uh, do you go fishing quite often? 
Yeah, I go fishing a lot. Um, any kind of fishing, I absolutely love. Every every vacation we go on, I book at least one trip on the boat to go fishing. And honestly, probably one of my most favorite things in the whole world to do is actually spearfish. You know, be in the water, underwater. Um, you know, where you can see the fish. And obviously, there's only about 95% of the fish you can't eat. You know, and that's a big thing. It's a, it's pretty cool knowing the fish. Um, that you can eat and, and going after them. So I just love all kinds of fishing and it's, you know, some people either love it or hate it. You know, there's the people that hate seeing fish photos on Instagram and whatnot, but no, I'm definitely a fish person. Definitely a fish person. 44, big fish photo on Instagram guy. No, wait, where's the coolest place that you've ever fished at? Coolest place? Um, probably Pyramid Lake in Nevada. Um, probably not very many people know of it. Um, it's beautiful. But um, it's a lot of hard work, but they have massive trout there. Um, caught like a 15-pound trout there, which is pretty much unheard of. They got a lot of 20-pounders there. But coming from Colorado, you know, we're messing around with yeah. one, two-pound trout. So to go down there and catch 15-pound trout is pretty surreal. So I'd probably say Pyramid Lake. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, I, I would imagine your girlfriend saw, before you guys were dating, a fish photo on Instagram, and that probably is what sealed the deal. All right. <laughs> Uh, totally, 100%. I probably took them all down before then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. When I'm in a bad mood, I like to turn it around by blank. Golfing. Golfing. Okay. How's the golf game? Pretty good? Have you gotten to golf out in Arizona? Inconsistent. Yeah, we've been out a couple times. Uh, me, Johnny Russell, Pulse Camp. Um, we've been out a couple times. The Arizona golf is kicking our butts. Let's just say that the the greens are very fast, very difficult. Um, but no, the, my last round was really good. Last round was good, but a couple rounds before that were not so good. So, <laughs> hey, that's okay. Still, still time while you guys are down there. I'm sure to to redeem yourselves. Um, okay, true. next. Yes, the biggest goal I have for 2023 is blank. Um. I would say health and it's, it's a combination. I would say health, um, starting the majority of the games and then playoffs. So kind of different, different goals for me personally and different team goals for sure. Love it. Okay. Least favorite attacking player to go up against in training is blank. Willie. You're not a guy to shy away from any, uh, any competition though, but I'm, Definitely, definitely not, but definitely Willie, just because you don't know when you're going to get absolutely blasted off the ball or something. Or in Peter's case, get jumped on after a goal, so. Very just, true, very uh, true. <laughs> okay, next one. My favorite athlete in the world is blank. Ooh, tough one. Favorite athlete in the world. Um, I probably have to say Kobe Bryant. Um. Yeah, wasn't a wasn't a huge fan of him growing up. Um, just a lot of stuff in the news, accusations, and then um, you know I really started diving in and doing some research and watching some documentaries on him and and how he dealt with everything. Uh, that was actually prior to him passing away, but definitely dove into it after he passed away as well and learned a lot about him and um, a lot of the adversity that he had to overcome, even being you know the best of the best. So I probably learned the most from him mentally. I love it. All right, last one. Something I do every game day is blank. Like like a superstition or just like a pregame ritual. A lot of pregame rituals. Nothing that I would brag about. Um, that's a tough one. Probably, probably pray. Um, probably pray in the stall, in the bathroom. Very consistent. Make sure that I get my prayer in. Um, but yeah, I would say I would say pray. That's a big That's a one for one. me. Hey, I do that before I even like broadcast. I know it's it's just like a nice way to like see yourself and get ready for uh, the task at hand. Not that I'm going out and actually having to compete, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> the nerves. Um, awesome. Right. Well, hey, thank you so much for taking the time. It's been great having you on the show. Looking forward to watching you and the team here in just a couple of weeks. The season kicks off. I know going on the road to Portland is, is a big one that you guys have circled on the calendar just after last season. I, I've heard Johnny talk about it and I know it's a big one for you guys. Yeah. Huge, huge. And that's all we're focused on as of now. That's it.
Awesome. Well, looking forward to it and big things ahead for the team and for you in 2023. Thanks so much for joining the show and have a great rest of your preseason as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed this episode of Soccer Talks with me, Ali Trost Martin, and our special guest, Courtney Ford of Sporting Kansas City, then be sure to subscribe to the KCSN Soccer channel on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for watching and have a good rest of your day.